Right. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to our students online as well. Okay, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and we'll get into our teaching. Father, we thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, and even as we come together to learn, pray, Holy Spirit, that you will minister to our hearts, and, and Lord, thank you for the deposit that has been happening in each of our hearts, and we pray, God, that you will continue to deposit your word into our heart, our identity of who we are and what you have called us to be, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So last class, we stopped in ch at chapter 78. Right, 78. Uh, we just Let me just touch on that. The Apostle Paul said, you know, for the weak, I will become weak. Right? For the, for the Jew, I'll be a Jew. For the Gentile, I'll be a Gentile. All of this I'll do for the sake of the gospel. Uh, so God has given us freedom. right? And we talked about the freedom that God has given us. But we must also be wise and learn to use the, wis the freedom that God has given us wisely. Right? So the best example was that of food. Right? Uh, do we have the freedom to eat anything? Right now, yeah, we can eat anything, but we don't misuse that freedom by putting somebody else down and saying, "Hey, well, you don't eat non-veg. How can it be? You know, this is what the Bible says." We don't misuse that freedom. So, the freedom that God has given us is for us to enjoy, but to make sure that the other person is put first rather than our own interests. Okay, so let's get into chapter seventy-nine. Everyone with me in chapter seventy-nine? You have your books? Okay, that's good. Okay, now again, uh, we'll be talking about the points that we've discussed, but um, if I'm going a little fast, uh, feel free to stop me in between. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, talking about the children of God. Galatians 3, 26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is this one verse is so powerful. It just speaks of our identity. Right? You and I are sons of God. Why? Or how are we the sons of God? Through? Through what? No, there's another word. Through what in Jesus Christ? Is there in the verse? Through faith in Jesus Christ. So, what is faith? Hebrews 11 talks about faith. Anyone know that verse? Faith is the substance of things. This faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I may not see things, but I have a hope that it will happen. Right? That's faith. You and I have faith. Right? Every person, and we were talking about this in uh, our other course as well. We all have faith. But here it says, the moment we have faith in Jesus Christ, we are sons of God. That means what? You believe in Jesus, Jesus is saying, okay, you're, the, you're my son. But wait, Jesus, I did so many mistakes. But these are the problems in my life. All that I'll do later. What is your identity? You believe in me, you're a son of God. You're a child of God. Right? So there are no strings attached. That means there's no additional things that God is saying to do. God is not saying go to Israel and go up the mountain two times and come and then I will do this. Or you have to, you know, you have to do this, this list of things and only then you will be my child. No. He's saying those who have faith in God. Everyone say faith in God. It's so wonderful, right? We don't have to do anything. Now, here's the other portion. Because we have faith, we will do something for God. right? Because God did everything for us. The Lord Jesus did everything for us. So we live our life for Him. Yes or no? Right? We live a life of faith. Just because God, the Lord Jesus, calls us His sons doesn't mean we don't do anything. Yes, we don't come by works. But we have to work. You see that difference? Right? We don't come by our own merits. 
but we have to work hard and be prosperous. So we must learn to maintain this balance. What does Apostle Paul say? He says, if you don't work, don't eat. Strong words. Right? To the Thessalonians, he says, I heard that you people are, you know, you're waiting for the rapture to happen and you're sitting at home and doing nothing. Work. If you don't work, don't eat. Right? So we must learn to maintain that balance as children of God. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born not of the flesh. Now everyone look at your hands. That is flesh. Right? When you were born, when you and I were born, we were born of flesh, right? We were not flying everywhere. In the hospital, we were born. We were flesh. And we will continue to be flesh. Flesh will be there. Right? And this flesh also will go. But here he's saying, you're not born of the flesh anymore. You're born of the spirit, meaning born of God. Now, is God flesh? Is God flesh? What does the Bible say? God is no, spirit. Thank you. He whispered it. Yes. God is spirit, and those who worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. Everyone with me, no? So what is born of the flesh? Is flesh. What is born of the spirit? Is spirit. Now, when we were unbelievers, we were walking in the flesh that means what when we say flesh it's it's not only the physical aspect right also the the things of this world maybe i'm drinking and you know drinking alcohol smoking doing drugs living a sinful life that's living in the flesh but now as believers we are living in the spirit why because the verse here says we are born of God. What is 2 Corinthians 5.17? All of you must know this. Sorry? Yeah. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation, all things, all things have become Okay, I want you to learn this properly, right? In the night, if I wake you up and ask you what is Second Corinthians five seventeen, you must be able to tell me. Now, this is the core of what we are studying, right? Uh, identity. Okay, Ephesians chapter one, verse four and five. Very, very, very powerful passage where we all, you know, most of us quote this. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in, him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons of G by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will having predestined us to adoption that means what when you and i which chapter this is chapter 79 Gertrude. when you and i are become believers the word predestined means God has already planned something for those who believe. Okay, let me just use an example. I haven't thought of this, but let's use this example. For example, this young man, he wants to join the army. right? So he's working hard. He writes his test and all that. He's making sure he's also physically fit. He joins the army. Now, before he was not in the army. The moment he joins in the army, what happens? Something will happen to him. His identity changes, okay. But there are other benefits in that. Why? Because he's serving the nation. So there'll be benefits of groceries, you know, um, and um, uh, there'll be facilities available for him. Some, some governments provide homes, free education, sorry. Transport, transport, is that what you said? Yeah. 
uh, free education for children. Now that is already there. Now, if I'm not an army guy, I can't go to the army quarters and say, can I stay here? They'll say, no. Why? You're not in the army. You join the army, all this is yours. The same way, if I'm not a believer, the, you know, I don't, I'm not a child of God yet. But the moment I become a child of God, God has already kept things for us. Right? Like how the army keeps free education for children, free food, free electricity. You know, when, when, when there's a death in the family, the family, you know, get compensation. So many things are, it's already decided and the government has made it that way. So as believers, when you and I are predestined, when we, are, when we come into Christ, what does it say here? We are predestined, having predestined us to adoption. Some of us may say, hey, I, I'm not, I have parents. Yeah, those parents, parents are parents. Right? But now you have a heavenly father. You have the Lord Jesus himself. Right? And it says here, predestined us to adoption according to the good pleasure of his will. That means God was pleased to do that. Right? Let's go to Gal uh, Romans 8.14. Uh, this that one verse 14 and 15 for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god remember this verse we talked about this as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god those who are the sons of god are led by the spirit of god both ways right that is why in the you know in the supernatural hour that we spend time here it's very important to you know, be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. Right? Because the Holy Spirit will speak. He will speak through different ways. Because it says here, if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are the Son of God. So are you a child of God? Yes. So the Holy Spirit will minister. He will speak. Right? It's just that we have to be sensitive to that, uh, to the leading, to his leading. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, let's read that together. Verse 16, the spirit this himself bears witness to, to our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit is here. This is our spirit. The Holy Spirit tells our spirit, hey, you're a child of God. Now, what if I say, no, I'm not. So what am I doing? I'm pushing away the Holy Spirit. I say, Paul writes, no, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. right? Because he's there. He's like a dove. He's there. So let's use this example. This is the Holy Spirit. This is your spirit, right? Right now, it's like this. Okay. The more I speak to the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit will speak to me. The more there is communication and then we become strong. Now, if I keep saying, oh, you know, I keep falling into temptation and I keep sinning. What am I doing? I'm building a wall. You know, this, this mic is like a wall. I'm building a wall. But the Holy Spirit is there, but because of sin, there's a you know, he's there, but we are pushing him away. He's not going, we are pushing him away. So, what's happening? Our mind is crowded with so many things. Uh, you know, we are continually sinning, we are pushing the whole witness of the Holy Spirit. But when we forgive, ask for forgiveness, what does it say? The Holy Spirit will again bear witness. So, you see how important it is as believers that. We must be able to overcome things that happen in our life, temptations, challenges, mind. The devil will come and say, these are the things you are. This is how you are. These are the wrong things uh, that you do and all of that, right? We must, we must understand the Holy Spirit is there. He's bearing witness, right? We do wrong. We say, Holy Spirit, I did this wrong. Please forgive me. What's happening? He's bearing witness. Don't worry. You're my child. You're my son. You cry out to God. Through His Spirit, you call Him 
Abba Father. Why is this important? Have you ever thought of this? You know, the Lord Jesus, the disciples to told Jesus, teach us how to pray. What did Jesus say? Our Father, who art in heaven. Now the first two words itself is too much. Like, think you're a Jew. Okay? Think you're living in Israel. You're a Jew. Now, in the Old Testament, oh God, Jehovah, they used to, you know, those, who's write, those who are writing will go wash their hands, wash their face to write Jehovah. He's the God of heaven and earth, high place, right? the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses. When Moses went up Mount Sinai, they saw the glory of God. The Jews have so much. And now in, there's a temple and you cannot go into the most holy place. Why? Because God's holiness is there. Now Jesus is teaching his disciples what? Our Father. The moment you say Father, what is it? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Personally, you don't call anyone on the road Father, no. Do you call anyone on the road? Or you call your, only your father, you'll call father. Even your own father's brother, what do you call? Whatever. Uncle, your own father's brother, still he's not your father. Why? You may have, you know, your father and your, uh, your father may have twins. Okay. You will know who's your father. Do you know that? Why? Because he's your father. Now Jesus is saying, when you pray, pray our father. If I was a disciple there, that I would say, what are you saying, Jesus? How can I call him father? Our Jehovah, you should say. Or our Adonai, or all those big words. No, 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 no. Call him our father. Because the time will come, through the Holy Spirit, you can cry out, Abba, Father. So you see, sometimes we read the Bible, we don't understand these things. For the Jew, if we were there listening to Jesus, we would have said, no, no. i rather call God, you know, Jehovah, all of those words. Not Father. How can I have a relationship with him like that? That's what he says here. Through his spirit, you and I call God Abba. As a child, we relate to him. Like a son is relating to the father, right? You don't, you know, if you, I think once you've become parents, you will understand, right? The, the relationship of, a, of, a, of, a, of parents and children, it's very different. You can wax the child, teach them, they will still come back. They will still love you the same way. And you will still love them the same way. Is correcting important, discipline important? Yes. But they're not going to be angry and say, I'm not talking to you. They won't do that. Because there's a relationship, father and son. Right? When I say son, it doesn't mean daughters are excluded. Father and a relationship between a father and a son, a child of God. Okay? Galatians, again, 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. You see that verse there? God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of the sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Right? So let's go down here. We see here a few points. Page 81. As children of God... We are adopted as sons and daughters, so we have a sense of belonging. Right? For example, all of you filled in your application forms, you all got admitted to Bible college. Right? So right now, you belong here. Right? Nobody come and come and say, hey, what are you doing here? Say, hey, I'm studying here. So I belong in this college. And as long as you're here, you belong in this college. 
right? So the same way, as sons and daughters, we have a sense of belonging. We may not have parents. We may not have anyone in this world, but we belong to somebody. We belong to Jesus, right? Two, we are chosen to be loved by him, meaning a sense of blessing. God blesses us. Three, he predestined us to be like Jesus. The Lord Jesus has already decided, if you read the book of Revelations and we read about the rapture, what will happen in the blink of an eye? We will be with him. The Bible says we will be like him and we will see him. Don't you feel that something so great? We will be like him. Now all that we are struggling, I mean, not struggling, but all that we are doing is to be more like Jesus. But, okay, everyone blink. Open your eyes. Okay, one, two, three. Blink and open, okay? One, two, three. That's it. Glorified body. Right? That's it. In the twinkling of an eye. Now, how God will do that? That you don't worry. That is God. Right? So what does it say here? He, he predestined us to be like him. And when we see him, we will see him just as he is. We will have a glorified body. Right? And Paul writes more about it in many other places. Then we are called according to a, his purpose, meaning we have a sense of purpose. We have a plan. We are not living life arbitrarily. That means we are not living life, OK, today is Monday, next is Tuesday, then Friday will come, then Saturday you rest, then Sunday go to church, say two hallelujahs, come back home. Then Monday again, go. No, there's a sense of purpose in life, right? Right now, okay, Bible college, but then you can't be here the rest of your life, right? You gotta have a purpose for your life. What is the purpose that God has for me? So you, you know, there's this calling to a purpose, and then we are justified in His sight, meaning we have a sense of freedom. We talked about that. Justified. What is justified? Just as if you have not sinned. Okay, everyone say this. Thank you, Gertrude. Just as if we have not sinned. Six. What is justified? Somebody asks you what is justified? Simple. Just as if we have not sinned. Finish. Right. So these are words that you must know by now. Okay. Remember I told you to write down these words. Did you do that? Justified, sanctified, redeemed, all of those words. Right. Uh, so make sure you know these. Okay. Because we've almost come towards the end of the course. Okay. Then we are glorified together with Jesus. Okay, how do we be living as children of God? We are the beloved of the Father. That means we are deeply loved. We are his family. We are heirs. Right? We talked about heirs, right? co-heirs and heirs with Christ. That means we have a rich inheritance. We have a rich man. He has one son, right? a businessman, for example. He has one son. What will happen to him? That son knows that most likely the business is going to come to him. Why? Because he's the heir. Now that son may be a, you know, a person who's not gone to school also. He may have been only, in, you know, completed his 10th standard. It doesn't matter. Yes or no? He may have completed only his uh, primary school till fifth standard. It doesn't matter. He's the heir to the business because he is the child of that family. You understand, right? So, so it's very important that we understand this heir and being joined heirs. We share with Jesus Christ and we are ambassadors. That means we represent God wherever we go. OK? All right, let's get into chapter 80, adopted as sons and daughters. 
So we talked about this, right? We we cry, Abba, Father. That means you are not a prodigal son. You and I are not slaves. You and I are not orphans. You and I are not people who have been put to shame. And Jesus is not looking at us saying, oh, this boy or this girl, how much I told him not to do this, but he's still doing this. And, you know, I give up on this person. Never, never will Jesus say that. Will a father... An earthly father, Jesus himself says, when an earthly, when, when a child asks for bread, will the father give him a stone? No. So Jesus is saying, if the earthly father, being so sinful and wicked, still know how to love their children, how much more will your father in heaven love you more? Right? So remember this. We will make mistakes we will fail but when god looks at us he's saying you are not a slave you are not a failure you are not what people talk about you look at what i am saying i am saying i love you just the way you are you may be broken you may be fearful you may be doubtful you may have a long list of things but you're not a prodigal you're not a slave you're my child and this is the most you know, wonderful part, that we can run to Jesus at any time. People will say, hey, you are useless. You can't do this. But Jesus will not say that. Jesus will not say that. You can always run to him. You know, as pastors and as leaders, sometimes people think, no, everything is fine in life. No. We go through our shares of challenges, difficulties. But what do we do? We run to the Father, run to Jesus. Many times we don't have people to talk to, right? Because we are in leadership, but we run to Jesus. And many people, you know, uh, share their thoughts and things that they are going through. Many times we feel, oh, I wish we could do something, but what we can do is run to God, right? So I want to encourage all of us, whatever it is in our hearts, don't. Keep it back and say, oh, I am like this, or I'm going to remain like this. Never be in that place. God wants to see you grow. God wants to see you increase. God wants to bless you. Now, there's a part that you have to play. I always use this example. God told, uh, uh, you know, when in front of Lazarus' tomb, he said, you move the stone. I'll raise him up from the dead. Then Jesus said, you fill the water, I'll turn it into wine. Why didn't Jesus fill the water? He wanted him to do something. There's a work that we have to do. I remember what Jesus is uh, you know, feeding the five 5,000 people. There's five loaves of bread and two fish. So Jesus says, get whatever you have, get it to me. If the disciples had just stood there, no, nothing is there. He said, there's five loaves of bread, two fish. He said, yeah, that's more than enough. And he took whatever little and he multiplied. So you and I, these are all principles that we must use in our life. We want to do many things, but God expects us to also do the work. When Peter said, if you are God, let me also walk on the water. Peter said, okay, Jesus said, okay, come. Now, Peter was still sitting in the boat, what would have happened? Nothing would have happened. Jesus would have come and sat and said the word. But he had to take the step. So you and I must take the step right, to fulfill. You know, when God puts something in our heart, you take the step. Right? Don't be discouraged. Don't always say, you know, I can't do, I can't do. No, you can. Okay? So you are not a prodigal. You are not a slave. You are not an orphan. You have a heavenly father, a father in heaven who can provide for you, who can, you can protect you, who will give you the wisdom, who will give you understanding. He will train you. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will do everything. All we need to do is to ask him. What does Jesus say? Ask of me and I will give you. Seek, seek you will find. Knock, the door will be opened. Jesus doesn't say, knock, I'll 
I'll try to open. As he say, says, knock the door. Be. Seek, you will find. But Jesus, I'm seeking for past five years. Continue to seek. What's happened in the five years? I've become stronger. My faith has become stronger. Now suddenly when challenge comes, I says nothing. No, no problem. God is with me. Why? Five years you're trusting God. You see? Right? So you hold on to all of this. Let it become true in your spirit. Okay? Okay. Chapter 81. Chosen to be loved. Let's look at the other verse. Romans 8, 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, everyone say the word conformed. There are two words, right? There's a word called transformed. There's a word called conform. The word transformed means to change. When the rapture happens, we'll be transformed. In the twinkling of an eye, our body will be transformed. But here the word is conformed. That means what? Conformed is to become like. So for example, you know, if you look at this, right? You have a father, you have a son, right? So the son is growing. And as the son becomes 10 years, 12 years, 15, 18, the son will begin to look exactly like the father. So if you take a photo of the father when he was 18 years old and take the photo of the son who is 18 years old, they look the same. It's just an example. What's happening? They, they're conforming. He's conforming and he's become like, like the father. Right? Just like he's, he's conforming to it. Or another example would be, uh, you know, the porter, right? Uh, for example, he's making a clay pot. Right? Sometimes what they do is they have these iron shapes of the pot. Right? The iron shapes. So what they do is they take the clay and they pour that hot clay into that shape. For example, it's a triangle. Right? This is an example. So the moment he pours that hot clay into the triangle, what is happening? The clay is conforming to the shape of the triangle. The clay is not going outside. It's not becoming a rectangle. Why? Because it's a triangle. It's conforming to that shape. Here it's saying, predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That means when you and I are believers, God is conforming us to be like Jesus. Think of that triangle. The clay is put. It becomes a triangle. It's conformed. It, it just happens. Right? You can't pray over that clay and say, we've become a square. It will not. Because it's just conformed to a triangle. Everyone get know what I'm saying? Right? So the same way Jesus is saying, he is conforming us to become more like him. Every day, we are changing and changing and changing our thinking, our words, our actions, our character, our behavior is conforming to be more like Jesus. You have you become a chosen one when you made the decision to believe in Jesus. Many are called, but few are chosen. A chosen one is a special one. Right? The word chosen means to be picked out. How many of you went to school here? All of us went to school, right? Now, when you went to school, they will choose somebody as the captain of the class. They will choose somebody to be the vice captain. It's chosen. Now God is saying, he has chosen you. He has picked you. He has... Out of many, he has picked you to be his child, to be conformed to his image, right? Uh, he has separated you and me out of, uh, out of this secular world that we see. He has separated us. 
you know, the word sanctified, he has separated us from the people of this world. And we are chosen to be loved by him. James 2, 5 says, listen, my beloved brethren, God has not chosen the poor of this world to be rich. It has not God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? Look at Jesus' disciples. Were they good? Were they great disciples? Were they great men and women? The people who were there? What, what were they? Fisherman, tax collector. One more fisher man. All, all, all meager. Why didn't Jesus go to the temple and say, okay, this Pharisee, this Sadducee, uh, this priest and this priest, you all follow me. He chose the meager people to represent his kingdom. That's what he's saying here. He did not God choose the poor of the when he say poor, doesn't mean poor in like you know, uh, not only in not financial status, poor in meaning the meager, the humble. God chose them to make them rich in faith. Fishermen. Imagine Peter, they would have just think of this. They would have seen Peter catching fish. Peter and Andrew. Hey, these two brothers, they've gone to catch fish. They would have seen, right? People would have seen. From the young age, they're growing up, catching fish, selling the fish in the market. Now suddenly, what happened to them? They, when Peter's walking, people are getting healed. Thousands of people are following Peter. Before, nobody bothered. Nobody bought fish from him also. What's happened? What is this change? God took the meager people, made them great. And that's what he does with you and me. When we are humble at heart, he will take us and he will make us great. Great in faith. He will use us. Right? We are predestined to be like Jesus. Predestined means to be as in planned ahead of time. He did not predestine your choices. Very important. Underline this. He did not Predestine your choice, but plan that for those who make this choice, they will be conformed into the image of Christ Jesus. It's on page 83. See that? Predestined is planned, is planned ahead, as in planned ahead of time. Okay, this is very important. Listen to this. The Lord Jesus did not predestine your choice, meaning he did not force you and say believe in me how many of you were forced to believe in Jesus anyone no so God has predestined us but he didn't force us but the moment we believe in Jesus what does it say there the choice when we make the choice when I say okay Jesus I want to change my life I want to become you know I want to leave all these sinful natures I want to be more holy I know I'm doing something wrong. I want to give my life to you. The moment I do that, he begins to conform us into the image of Christ. So the choice is yours and mine. We can never force people to make the choice. Right? The moment I'm, I'm, I say if, if somebody is forced, it's not a true change. It cannot be a true change. If somebody is forced to do this, if somebody is forced to study, they will not study. If somebody is forced to learn an instrument, they will not learn it. You cannot force people to do it. But when it's made out of free choice, no matter what the consequences are, they're willing to take, take it up. Right? So we are predestined to adoption. We are predestined to his purpose. We are predestined and conformed to the image of his son. And we are predestined to be like Jesus. Okay. All right. Okay. We, what we'll do is we'll stop here. Uh, we spoke a lot. Uh, but here's what I want each one of you to do. Uh, those who are online, you can feel free to do that as well. Now, I want you to take a book 
or a paper. Right? Take, it's better if you write it in a book. I want you to write down a few things. One is Second Corinthians 5.17. Write it down. So I want you to write it and speak it as you're writing it. OK? Everyone wrote that? Second Corinthians 5.17. So, and then Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. Galatians 3.26. At least three verses. Three simple verses. OK, write it down, write it down at least four or five times, write it down. And as you're writing it, speak it. Remember, this is God's word. Now, the moment you're looking at it as an assignment, stop writing it. You get what I'm saying? Right? If you feel, oh, pa Pastor G is given uh, uh, assignment, don't write it. If, if you're writing it with a heart of learning, then you write it. Okay. Romans. Romans eight fourteen. Thank you. And Galatians three twenty six. Right. So write it down and speak it over your life as you're writing it. Say it. Say it. But those who want to do it in Hindi, you can do it in Hindi also. Right. But I encourage you do it in English. Right. So you will learn that as well. So uh, and declare it. Write it. Declare it. Write it. Declare it. So so by next week. Should I say next Friday? Next Friday, when I ask these three verses, you should not. Is it too much? It's OK, right? Uh, just keep speaking and just keep declaring it, even in your break time. Just keep speaking the word of God. You know, these are things that we do. And whenever I'm talking, I just say, hey, I'm a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, I'm a new creation. I am a child of God. I can do all things through Christ. I don't need to know the, you know, the chapter verse and all. It's okay. The word is still powerful. Sometimes I just keep speaking, right? Oh, I, uh, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Just, just declaring the word of God, reiterating what the word does in your spirit. Okay. So I want you to do that. And the next one is, please. Learn what is righteousness. Write it down. Write down these three words. Righteousness. You don't have a book? You have a notebook? Don't write in your Bible. Write, write in your notebook. OK, OK. You always should. OK. OK, righteousness. Justification, sanctification, three words, three verses and three words. OK, uh, yes, thank you, Gertrude. These three verses and these three words, righteousness, justification, and sanctification. Right. Uh, just see, uh, even as you're learning what it means, don't. it's not like you should learn it word for word. Understand it. Right? Because even a parrot, if you tell a parrot, go upstairs, it will repeat, go upstairs. But it doesn't know the meaning. Right? You've got to understand it. OK, this is what it, what is righteousness. This is what is justification. This is what is sanctification. Let it be an understanding in your spirit. OK, we'll do that. And then we'll meet uh, uh, next week. And we'll continue learning from here. All right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, those who are online. Have a good day and a good week ahead. God bless.